Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be learning about the anatomy of the heart. To begin with, the heart is a conical hollow muscular organ situated in the middle mediastinum. It is enclosed within the pericardium. The heart is placed obliquely behind the body of the sternum and adjoining parts of the coastal cartilage so that one third of it lies to the right and two thirds to the left of the median plane. The direction of blood flow from atria to ventricles is downwards, forwards and to the left of the median plane. The heart measures about 12 into 9 centimeter and weighs about 300 grams in males and 250 grams in females. Now let's look at the external features of the heart. The human heart has four chambers, the right and left atria and the right and left ventricles. The atria represented in yellow and green lie above and behind the ventricles. On the surface of the heart, they are separated from the ventricles by atrioventricular groups. The atria are separated from each other by an interatrial groove. The ventricles represented in pink and violet are separated on the outside by a groove called the interventricular groove. The heart has an apex right here directed downwards, forwards and to the left. It has a base that is directed backwards, it is the posterior surface. It has surfaces that is anterior surface or the sternocostal surface, the inferior surface and the left lateral surface. It has borders that is the upper border, the inferior border, the right and the left borders. Concising the important points that we learnt under the introduction to the heart, the heart is a conical hollow muscular organ situated in the medial mediastinum. It is enclosed within the pericardium. The heart is placed obliquely behind the body of the sternum and adjoining parts of the coastal cartilage so that one third of it lies to the right and two thirds to the left of the median plane. The direction of blood flow from atria to ventricles is downwards, forwards and to the left of the median plane. The heart measures about 12 into 9 centimeters and weighs about 300 grams in males and 250 grams in females. Looking at the external features, the human heart has four chambers, the right and left atria and right and left ventricles. The atria lie above and behind the ventricles. On the surface of the heart, they are separated from ventricles by an atrioventricular groove. The atria are separated from each other by an interatrial groove. The ventricles are separated from each other by interventricular groove. The heart has an apex directed downwards, forwards and to the left, a base that is posterior surface directed backwards, three surfaces that is anterior or stonocostal surface, inferior and the left lateral surface and the borders which include the upper, inferior, right and left borders. We will be learning about the apex, the base, the surfaces and the borders in detail in the later part of this video. Now let's look at the grooves or the sulci in detail. The atria are separated from the ventricles by a circular atrioventricular or coronary sulcus which is divided into anterior and posterior parts. The anterior part is seen in front and posterior part is seen behind. Now the anterior part consists of right and left parts. The right half is oblique as you can see right here between the right auricle and the right ventricle lodging the right coronary artery as you can see right here. And the left half of the coronary sulcus is small and lies between the left auricle and the left ventricle. It lodges the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. Here is the left coronary artery. The coronary sulcus is overlapped anteriorly by the ascending iota and the pulmonary trunk. Now after the coronary sulcus we have the interventricular groove that lies between the two ventricles. Here is the anterior interventricular sulcus or the anterior interventricular groove. It is nearer to the left margin of the heart. Now here is the posterior view of the heart where we can see the posterior interventricular groove. It is situated on the diaphragmatic or the inferior surface of the heart. Here is the posterior part of the coronary sulcus. 
concising the important points under the grooves of the sulci. The atria are separated from the ventricles by a circular atrioventricular or coronary sulcus, which is divided into anterior and posterior parts. The anterior part consists of right and left halves. The right half is oblique between the right auricle and the right ventricle, lodging the right coronary artery. The left half is small between the left auricle and the left ventricle and lodges the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. The coronary sulcus is overlapped anteriorly by the ascending iota and the pulmonary trunk. The anterior interventricular groove is nearer to the left margin of the heart, whereas the posterior interventricular groove is situated on the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. Now let's look at the apex of the heart. The apex of the heart is formed entirely by the left ventricle. It is directed downwards, forwards and to the left. It is overlapped by the anterior border of the left lung and it is situated in the left 5th intercostal space 9 cm lateral to the mid sternal line. Now this is a posterior view of the heart. We are going to learn about the base of the heart in detail. The base of the heart is also called the posterior surface. It is formed mainly by the left atrium and by a small part of the right atrium. In relation to the base, there is openings of four pulmonary veins as you can see right here, the left two pulmonary veins and the right two pulmonary veins, which open into the left atrium. Now the superior and inferior vena cava shown in blue open into the right atrium. Now let's look at the four borders of the heart. First we have the upper border which is slightly oblique and formed by the two atria chiefly by the left atrium. Second we have the right border. The right border is vertical and formed by the right atrium and it extends from the superior vena cava to the inferior vena cava. Now we have the inferior border that is the third border. It is nearly horizontal and is formed by the right ventricle. It extends from the inferior vena cava to the apex of the heart. Finally, we have the left border. It is oblique and curved and it is formed by the left ventricle and left atrium. It separates the anterior and the left surface of the heart. This is the left border. So we have the upper border, the right border, the inferior border and the left border. Now let's look at the surfaces of the heart. First we have the anterior or the sternocostal surface. It is formed mainly by the right atrium and the right ventricle and partly by the left ventricle and the le left auricle. Most of the sternocostal surface is covered by the lungs. But a part of it that lies behind the cardiac notch of the lung is uncovered and that uncovered area is dull on percussion called the area of superficial cardiac dullness. Now let's look at the left surface. It is formed mostly by the left ventricle and at the upper end by the left auricle. In its upper surface, the surface is crossed by the coronary sulcus. It is related to the left phrenic nerve and pericardiophrenic vessels. This is the left surface. Now let's look at the inferior surface or the diaphragmatic surface. It rests on the central tendon of the diaphragm. The left two-thirds is formed by the left ventricle. This is the left ventricle. And right one-third of the surface is formed by the right ventricle. So this is the inferior or the diaphragmatic surface. Now let's look at the crux of the heart. It is a meeting point of the interatrial sulcus, the posterior interventricular sulcus and the coronary sulcus right here. Now concising the important points, the apex of the heart is formed entirely by the left ventricle. It is directed downwards, forwards and to the left. It is overlapped by the anterior border of the left lung. It is situated in the left 5th intercostal space 9 cm lateral to the mid sternal line. Looking at the base of the heart, it is also called the posterior surface. It is formed mainly by the left atrium and by a small part of the right atrium. In relation to the base, there is openings of four pulmonary veins which open into the left atrium. 
the superior and inferior vena cava open into the right atrium. Looking at the borders of the heart, the upper border is slightly oblique and is formed by the two atria, chiefly the left atrium. The right border is vertical and formed by the right atrium. It extends from the superior vena cava to the inferior vena cava. The inferior border is nearly horizontal and formed by the right ventricle and it extends from the inferior vena cava to the apex of the heart. The left border is oblique and curved and it is formed by the left ventricle and left atrium. It separates the anterior and left surface of the heart. Now, concising the important points under the surfaces of the heart, we have the anterior or stonocostal surface. It is formed mainly by the right atrium and right ventricle and partly by the left ventricle and left auricle. Most of the sternocostal surface is covered by the lungs, but a part of it that lies behind the cardiac notch of the left lung is uncovered. The uncovered area is dull on percussion and is called the area of superficial cardiac dullness. The inferior or the diaphragmatic surface rests on the central tendon of the diaphragm. The left two-thirds is formed by the left ventricle and the right one-third is formed by the right ventricle. Looking at the left surface, it is formed mostly by the left ventricle and at the upper end by the left auricle. In its upper surface, the surface is crossed by the coronary sulcus. It is related to the left phrenic nerve, pericardiophrenic vessels. The crux of the heart is a meeting point of the interatrial, atrioventricular and posterior interventricular groups. Now let's learn about each of the four chambers that is the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle and left ventricle in detail. First let's begin with the right atrium. 